Sports. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on Amazon MemoryDB, a durable in-memory database that can be used to build real-time performance-intensive applications. My name is Sashi Varanasi. I lead the in-memory and blockchain specialist architecture teams at AWS. And I'm joined by Siva Kuruturi, who is our in-memory database specialist solutions architect. In this webinar, we will start off with an introduction to Amazon MemoryDB, understand a few of its product differentiators, then present with a few industry use cases, and end with a demo. So let's get started with an overview of MemoryDB. There are many types of applications today that expect instantaneous responses. The businesses are operating at a global scale and reach that created new demands, such as millions of users, large volumes of data, high request rates, and better access and scale. Applications need real-time data access. There is a lot of pressure on the data layer of the applications. We cannot dilute the end user experiences with applications that are slow to perform. Low latency or sub-second response times are not an option anymore. And there is data to back that up. According to some studies done in retail market, a 100 millisecond delay in website load time can hurt conversion rates by 7%, and a two second delay in web page load time increases bounce rate by 103%, which means slower the application, the more business you're going to lose. In other words, real-time applications can save millions of dollars by helping retaining the customers as well as in providing better operational excellence. In the application stack, access to data to and from the database is usually the bottleneck. Old guard relational databases tend to have monolithic data structures and cannot accommodate a variety of data types and were not designed for millions or tens of millions of concurrent users. Adding larger instances or more read replicas per node is cost prohibitive. MemoryDB can solve this problem as it can provide ultra fast performance that is in microseconds because the data resides in memory. MemoryDB is about speed and as a fully managed Redis, it can simplify your evolving application architectures. Let's dive a bit more deeper into Amazon MemoryDB and look at three important product differentiators. First, MemoryDB provides ultra-fast microsecond latencies. The data here is based on R6G 16 extra-large node, and here we can achieve 390,000 reads per second and scale further with replicas, 100,000 writes per second, scale further with sharding. So it is a database designed to keep all data in memory, providing high performance, durability, high availability, and high throughput. Second, MemoryDB achieves full durability. If you're familiar with open source Redis, it stores all data in memory. And if primary node goes down before the replication has completed, then data is lost. We have solved this problem in MemoryDB by using an internal technology called multi-AZ transaction log. Only after the write is successfully written to the durable transaction log, primary node responds to the client with the success, providing strong durability. Third, MemoryDB is Redis compatible. Redis is an in-memory data store where values are accessed by a key. Unlike other key value data stores that offer limited data structures, Redis has a variety of data structures to meet your application needs. Redis data types include hashes, sorted sets, geospatial data structures, streams, and JSON, and more. They can support different types of application use cases. We will now look at some of these common customer use cases for MemoryDB. We'll start off with retail e-commerce applications. Retail customers are in search of speed and agility, speed in order to retain customers and agility to innovate faster. As you know, microservices is the de facto standard used for implementing modern applications needing agility. Microservices break a monolith into e easy to manage chunks of modules or microservices. 
MemoryDB is a powerful solution for these needs as it can provide speed with its ultra fast characteristics. And it can also act as a lightweight database engine supporting a couple of different microservices patterns. One, for example, is database per service pattern and the other is a durable session store pattern. Let's look at the database per service pattern first. You can use MemoryDB, which has a lightweight Redis engine for each individual microservice that is concerned only with the data private to that service. MemoryDB can back a wide range of microservices, each with their own data structure. You can use hash Redis data structure in product service and sort it set in recommendations microservice. Implementing data layer using MemoryDB provides speed that is needed and also agility and flexibility needed by microservices. The next pattern here is durable session store or shared state pattern for the retail application in this case. This can contain user profile, session data, shopping cart data, et cetera, that cannot be lost and need durable storage and need to be shared across many microservices. MemoryDB can support this pattern due to the full durability and extreme performance characteristics. Now let's look at financial services use cases. The most common use case that we have seen customers implement are quite a few in case of financial services. MemoryDB as a PCI tokenization data store for payment processing like quick in memory processing of very large volumes of data and other use cases using this data, using this as a data store for real time fraud detection, which we will cover in the next slide. Because of ultra low latency features, it can support real time fraud detection without diluting end user experience. MemoryDB can be used to store the reference data or the counters data that is needed to identify fraud. It can also be used as a durable online feature store for machine learning inferences. As shown in the bottom right side of this diagram here, you can use JSON data type for storing transactional data and streams data type for storing predictions and results. Another interesting use case of MemoryDB is in media and entertainment vertical, where we're seeing very good customer success. These are again, high volume applications needing extreme performance, which MemoryDB can support very well. Let's look at one of these use cases in media and entertainment. Here you use MemoryDB to create a highly durable message queue to asynchronously pass messages between microservices and support high throughput. In this diagram, we use MemoryDB as a priority queue for asynchronous communication between microservices in a media processing application. The video API service communicates asynchronously by placing the message in the durable MemoryDB queue making it ready for consumption by other chunking services. This guarantees message delivery and consumption and avoid any data loss. There is zero maintenance of the queue itself. I would like to now turn this over to Siva who will demonstrate how MemoryDB is implemented in a retail application. Over to you, Siva. Thank you, Sashi, for sharing use cases for real-time applications. There are many design level criteria that go into building real-time applications. Two that come to mind are choosing the right database and choosing the right architecture. Amazon MemoryDB for Redis as a fully managed Redis compatible, highly durable in-memory database is capable of delivering ultra fast performance at scale. It is essential to be using such databases for building real world applications. On the other hand, most modern applications are gravitating towards uh, microservices-based architectures. For the demo today, we're going to be showcasing one use case, which Sashi already covered earlier. Here we have a retail application where we have an inventory microservice for tracking the products and maintaining the products. We have an order microservice to basically execute orders against that inventory. We have some other uh, services which are responsible for inter-service communication, which we're going to cover that in a bit. Now, the way we're going to leverage MemoryDB is in multiple ways, right? Um, we're going to start looking at MemoryDB as a highly durable database. As Sashi mentioned earlier, 
MemoryDB has a lot of flexible in-memory data structures that can be used to build a variety of applications. Here, for example, uh, for an inventory microservice, we can use something like a hash to capture all the product-related information. Similarly, for orders, uh, we can also use a hash to capture the order information. Hash is nothing but a collection of key value pairs, similar to a Python dictionary or a Java hash map. Uh, now, when you execute an order, uh, you know that a lot of things happen behind the scenes. One such thing is making sure that you have the inventory to support your order. Uh, you also want to make sure that if you have an order that is ordering more than your inventory, you're going to execute a refund. Right? So this is where our other data structure called streams comes into play. It is an append-only log structure, uh, which is capable of you know, doing messaging to basically split the consumer and the producer and deliver that inter-service communication. So here, when the order is being executed, we have the inventory worker that's going to check the inventory. And we have the available inventory. Then it's going to basically pass the control back to the order to execute the order. So in, on the other hand, if you don't have the inventory, then it's going to pass on a message to the order worker to basically execute a refund. And we're going to demonstrate this over the part of the demo. Now, the way the architecture looks like is that we have memory DB, which is deployed as a multi-AZ auto failover setup across multiple availability zones. We have our retail application deployed in containers using a fully managed Amazon service called EKS. And then we have uh, ACK, which is AWS controllers for Kubernetes, which was built specially for memory DB so that you can actually control memory DB from within the Kubernetes environment. Now, now let's connect to one of the containers. Uh, we have the client container. Let's connect to client container and execute our API calls from there. So now we are logged in to our uh, client container. Here, we have the ability to basically access memory DB and execute those API calls. Let's execute an order API to basically order a soda, for instance. So the first thing that happens behind the scenes is that right now, as you can see, the order is being in pending status. So it's basically going, sending a message to Redis streams to, to check the inventory status, right? As we discussed earlier. And now if we have, if we have the in available inventory, then it's going to execute the order. So now let's go ahead and check the status of the order. Uh, so if you check the status of the order, it's completed. Uh, so since we have the available inventory behind the scenes, it went again, passed the control back to the order API to execute the order. Um, one of the other things that we're going to go look at here is also how this all looks like from within Redis, right? From within memory DB. So let's connect to memory DB and we're going to use a Redis CLI to connect to memory DB. Uh, so once we are in memory DB, we're just going to take a look at all the orders, right? Uh, so first, what we're going to do is take a look at all the keys available. So we have a bunch of keys, right? We have a key which is uh, for each product and it is a hash. So let's take a look at one of the, uh, the product keys, right? For that, we just use a hget all. This is not recommended for production environments because it's a blocking operation. Uh, but for, for demo purposes, we're just gonna take a look at hget all command. And this basically shows you uh, all the key value pairs. Uh, we, have, um, we have a donut, we have the price, we have the quantity and all that. Um, now we're going to take a look at um, the latest order that we executed, right? So the latest order that we executed had the order ID ending in FDF. So for that, we're going to take a look at the streams data structure. Um, so we have something called as X rev range to basically take a look at all the messages from the stream. We just want to look at the latest order. Uh, we have an, um, a key called events orders. Um, and we're going to basically just pick the latest message from the order. And this is going to give you the order that we just executed uh, for a soda. Uh, so now let's dive right into one of those uh, inventory workers, right? So on the top, you can see uh, we have uh, an events order key. And that's basically, that's how we're going to use to basically uh, listen to all the messages, right? And that's the key that we're going to listen to for all the messages. And the inventory worker is all it's doing is it's checking if we have the current inventory. If yes, then go ahead and execute the order, right? Similarly, in the order uh, worker, order worker, we have you know 
the same set of uh, commands. You know, we're going to listen to uh, multiple streams, right? Uh, one such stream is basically refunds. So if the inventory microservice says that we don't have enough inventory, it's going to pass on a message to the refunds uh, queue, and the order worker is going to pick on that message and basically issue a refund. This is how it all works internally from within back behind the scenes. With that said, uh, we have some resources for you to get started. Uh, please take a look at them and reach out to us if you have any further questions. Thank you.